In this video, I'll be testing six of the best ultra high performance tires on the market to find out exactly which tire is best for you. This is gonna be Tire Review's most in-depth tire test ever. I have the latest and greatest tires from Bridgestone, Continental, Hankook, Goodyear, Michelin, and Yokohama. And I'll be looking at, as usual, at the dry, wet, noise, comfort, and rolling resistance levels of the tire. I also, in this test, get to test wear, and not just machine wear. These tires are gonna be run in convoy on the road to tell you exactly which tire has the best tread life. I will also be looking at some cooler, wet performance of the tires, and hopefully some warm, wet performance of the tires. There's gonna be a lot to this test, so I'm not gonna delay any further. Let's get on with the testing. Wet handling. Now, before I start, I wanna quickly apologize. Uh, you might be able to hear it's raining, and I booked this test in the middle of France where it should be sunny, and I gave myself a week for a test that should take me about three and a half days, and I've had rain every single day apart from half a day. So while I've got all the important testing done, I have missed out on some of the nice bits I wanted to do. And sadly, I've barely been able to do any external filming because of the rain. But anyway, the tires and wet handling. As I said in the intro, these are the best of the best tires. So none of the tires are bad. Good news, all of the tires are good. And around a 93 second lap, there was about a three second difference between the best and the worst, and I'm saying worst. So that, that is how close they are. But subjectively, there's actually quite some spread, which I find really interesting, and I think it's the subjectiveness, especially for the road, is probably more applicable than the objective of the time. So we're gonna talk about those. The slowest, and I use the term slowest in inverted commas because none of them are slow, as I just said, was the Michelin and Yokohama. They essentially tied on time. And while they were essentially the same around the lap, they felt completely different. These were probably two of the biggest differences subjectively, so let's look into that. The Michelin was just an absolute lovely tire to drive. It did everything predictably. The steering was quick, like nicely quick, loaded up nicely, gave you predictability around the limit and then just broke into understeer. So it was a very easy tire to drive, very stable. All three laps were within, I think, one tenth of a second of each other. So that was a nice stable drive and nice easy tire to drive. The Yokohama on the other hand, whew, completely different beast. The steering response was even quicker and crisper. It felt racy. So when you turned into a corner, the front turned. And I really appreciate that as someone who enjoys driving on track. But the negative of that is as you would turn, the rear would come around quite a bit more. So the balance moved from this nice, predictable, safe understeer to a little bit of a fighty oversteer balance. And as I said, I really like that balance. On track, I think it's a nice challenge, but on the road, would I want my dad on the Yokohama or would I want him on the Michelin? And of the two, it would obviously be the Michelin, just because you want that predictability and that safeness. But as someone who enjoys driving, the Yokohama was a lot of fun. I think this is gonna be a, a racy tire in the dry. The other issue with the Yokohama, which only one other tire really had, was warm up. Now we're testing at quite cool temperatures. The wet testing was done at about 13 degrees and the water temperature was a little bit more. So it's already warmer than the average raining day in Europe. The average, because it's normally winter or autumn or spring, not summer. And the Yokohama gained a full second from lap one to lap two. And that wasn't a driving error because I did wet handling twice as I normally try and do. And it happened both times. And that's just the tire heating up. And as a driver, you can feel it. A second is, a, a second's noticeable, especially front axle grip and traction. So you really did notice the grip coming up as the tire warmed up. And again, that's something else that would feature on the road. Anyway, enough about those two. Next up was the Hankook. Now the Hankook had very good grip as all the tires did, but it delivered it in the most uh, mundane way, we shall say. Very safe balance. It had a lot of understeer and it just felt a little bit dead around center in terms of steering response and didn't give you the most feedback. It felt a bit mushy. So the tire would kind of sit on the sidewall and you'd notice that delay more than some of the other tires. Safe balance, good grip, but just I wouldn't call it a sports tire. Next up was Continental and Goodyear, and this once again cements the fact that the new Premium Contact 7 is a big step on from the Premium Contact 6 in the wet because that tire was a little bit fighty, and the Premium Contact 7, huge amounts of grip, especially under braking. It felt very good in brakes, uh, and it had now was a Michelin type balance. In fact, I test blind. And I did have a little bit of struggle working out between the Continental and Michelin. The difference was the Continental just gave you a little less feedback around the very limit and around sliding. So I guess in a way it was a little bit harder to drive 
uh, or a little bit harder to drive at the limit, but it did have more grip than the Michelin. So that's the trade-off between those two. The Goodyear was not the fastest hire, just 0.8% off the fastest, but it was definitely one of my favorites. In fact, it was, I think the Goodyear, the Goodyear felt like it was just designed for this Golf GTI. It had this blend between sportiness, so it had good steering, it had very good detail and limit, the best of all the tires, and it had this kind of like easy understeer balance if you wanted it, and it would allow you to like chuck it in and have a little bit of fun as well. So the asymmetric six, we know the asymmetric range is always outstanding in the wet, and Goodyear have once again done an amazing job with the asymmetric six, a tire I really enjoyed. And finally, fastest by a small margin, was the Bridgestone Potenza Sport. Now this tire often does very well in the wet, and once again, it did extremely well in this test. The Potenza Sport, I mean, at points when you're leaning on it laterally, almost felt like a wet race tire. It had so much grip laterally. And like the Yokohama, it was a little bit fighty, it was a little bit sporty, and you could play with the back end and have some really good fun. So of all the tires, from a purely purist driving perspective on track, the Bridgestone was my favorite. Uh, but like the Yokohama, it perhaps was a little bit too much oversteer balance of the road, and it did need a little bit of warm up, which is why I'm saying the Goodyear was the best all round tire in the wet. Now we've gone through all that, let's switch over to dry and see how these tires stack up in the dry. Dry handling, and I use the term dry quite loosely because the track is soaking wet, but I did do the testing in the dry, so I guess that's the important thing. Now, I spent the day I had doing dry braking and dry handling as quickly as possible to get through it before the storms came back, only to find pretty much everything we found out in the wet was the same in the dry, only magnified. That means the gaps between the tires were smaller in objective and time and braking distances, but subjectively, the gaps became larger. And again, that is quite interesting. I'll put the braking data on the screen. Um, apart from the Yokohama, all the tires were within 2%, which is like 65 centimeters or 20 something inches if you're American. So incredibly close. And I think the Yokohama would have done better if it was a little bit of a warmer day, because like in the wet, the Yokohama felt like it needed a bit of heat. And we'll see this flip flop in a second. We'll get to the Yokohama. It's some good news for that tire. Like in the wet, the tires kind of group into three groups starting with what I'm going to call the premium touring sports tires. So they're kind of the tires that feel a little bit more on the comfort side of the UHP segment. And that was the Hankook Michelin and Continental. Sadly, the Continental, because as regular viewers will know, the premium contact six was one of my favorite tires subjectively, as it was like the Yokohama and Bridgestone, a bit of a quick steering tire. Uh, and the premium contact seven has grown up. It now felt very similar to the Michelin. Of the three, the Hankook was again the most mushy, the least sporty, so it was a step behind the others. Great grip, but just a little bit of lack of communication at the limit uh, and lots of understeering. Just again, that slow to react steering, but it was more noticeable in the dry. The Michelin and the Continental were both very good, understeer balance, safe, easy tires to drive. Next up are the fun tires, and that's what I'm calling the Bridgestone and Yokohama. These two were very similar in steering speed and balance. That is, the front turned in really nicely and quickly, and that means you had you could bring the rear into play, which on track is really good fun. If you're doing a track date of the two, I would pick the Yokohama for a couple of reasons. Firstly, although it had similar steering speeds to the Bridgestone, at and around the limit, it gave you the most feedback of the two. So that would be my preference. Secondly, it liked the heat. Now I keep on talking about heat, and this is something that is different design requirements for the road and track. The Yokohama didn't get slower on its third lap. All the tires pretty much lost some time from lap one to lap three as they got too hot. The Bridgestone lost a lot of time from lap one to lap three. And finally, wear. The Yokohama still looked one of the more fresh tires once I'd finished the three laps. I only do three laps, but this is a very high grip, punishing circuit for the left front. It's a fast circuit, lots of long corners. The tires build up a lot of heat and some tires struggle. And of the six tires on test, the Bridgestone once again struggled the most. And after three laps, the left front was done. And we're gonna look at road wear later on, because road wear is different from track wear, but the Bridgestone really struggles on track. So I, uh, if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I'll put some photos of Instagram of the left front of all six tires so you can see what I mean. But yeah, the Bridgestone was difficult there. So we've had the, the premium touring sports tires, we've had the fun tires. Who does that leave? That leaves the Goodyear, and once again, the Goodyear just seems to sit 
in the middle of these two groups and on this Golf GTI, it's just the nicest blend of tires. If you want to drive nicely on the road, safe, predictably, and you want to have a little bit of fun. It doesn't sacrifice the balance to have fun, like the fun tires, and it doesn't sacrifice like understeer, give you too much understeer, like the premium touring sports tires, like those tires. So Goodyear, once again, objectively for me, like if I was doing a track day, I'd fit the Yokohama. If I was recommending a set of tires for my dad, it would be the Michelin, the Goodyear, or the Continental. But for someone who just wants a fun road tire, I think the Goodyear on this Golf GTI, like in the wet, has it. Right, um, apologies if you can hear the noise of the rain and the emotion of the stress in my voice. It's, it's been one of those weeks testing. Um, the rest of the data, dry braking was very close. We know that already. And wet braking was also incredibly close, sort of. It's complicated. So we basically did three different lots of wet braking because wet braking is very important. Now, the first wet braking is as we always test at New State and whatever weather conditions the test week presents us with, which in this case was about 18 degrees air and 19 degrees water. Now, this is very hot. This is unusually hot for tires in the real world on the road in the wet because normally it's wet in winter. So I was trying to arrange the tires as soon as we had all the tires together. I really wanted a test at seven degrees in wet braking, but sadly it took a little bit longer than expected. So the cool temperature of wet braking was at um, eight degrees air and at 12 degrees water, which is again, that's warmer than normal wet weather driving water. Uh, we also buffed a set of tires down to two millimeters, ran them in a little bit and then did wet braking at Warn State. I had planned on doing more at Warn State this week, but obviously the weather hasn't been on our side, but uh, wet braking at Warn State is the most important and it's coming in the EU tire label. As the tires wear, all the tires will just get better in the dry, both dry braking and dry handling. They'll, they'll, they just get better because um, of less block movement. Uh, and I did want to do wet handling, but I've tried doing Warn State wet handling before and on normal wet test tracks, it's very difficult because you just spend the entire time aquaplaning. So I'm glad we got wet braking done. So what does the data tell us? Well, the Continental was best when new in both warmer and cooler temperatures but it did drop off uh, quite a lot when it was worn. Now the Continental had such a big lead when new, it was incredibly impressive and new. Uh, it still was the best overall on average. If you add them, all three of them up, it was still the best tire and wet braking, uh, but it did drop off a little bit when worn. Uh, the Bridgestone, Goodyear and Michelin dropped off the least when worn, but the Bridgestone and Goodyear dropped off more when it was cooler. Now, I didn't notice this in wet handling with the Goodyear as I did with the Bridgestone. The Bridgestone was very noticeable as with the Yokohama and drop off in a temperature performance or improvement as the tire warmed up in handling. The Goodyear I didn't really notice. So that was a bit of a surprise in wet braking. This means there is no perfect tire for wet braking, but there was a perfect tire for the deeper water, the aquaplaning test, and that was the Continental because it was best in both straight and curved aquaplaning. But Goodyear and Michelin were also very good. I think Michelin was joint best in curved aquaplaning and they were, they were both at the good end of the spectrum. Rolling resistance, there is an inverse relation with fun, sadly. Um, as tires need to get better with rolling resistance for uh, OE manufacturers, for electric vehicles, for the environment, um, they have to take weight out of the tire. And what that means is this Yokohama, which is pretty bad in rolling resistance, was very fun. It's a stiff, solid, heavy constructed tire. Whereas at this end of the spectrum, the Continental, which I believe was the best, and um, you can feel like I can noticeably squeeze out and I can't do that with the Yokohama. So this is the trade-off you get. If you want the old fashioned fun tires, which is the Bridgestone and Yokohama, you can get them, but you do lose out in things like rolling resistance. Uh, whereas the Continental, I've already said, it's got a little bit softer compared to its uh, previous version, the Premium Contact 6. Um, but it's got better rolling resistance and better levels of comfort. Speaking of comfort, again, that inversion was true. Uh, the Goodyear was one of the best all round, I'd say, between handling and comfort, but the Michelin and Continental and the Hankook were also very good. We did measure internal noise. As always, it was very close. Uh, and internal noise, the figure I'm gonna put on screen is just a decibel figure. It doesn't give you pitch. We do subjective internal noise to work out which is kindest to the ear, because that's a combination of volume and the type of noise, whether it's high pitch or low pitch, uh, but because of the weather, I didn't get time to do that, I'm sorry. Finally, wear. Now, the wear test was not performed by me. It was done by the external independent company, Decra. 
This company is the one of the masters of wear, if not the master of wear tests in Europe. And it's known as the gold standard of wear testing. That means all the tires, it wasn't a machine where it wasn't we'll just put them on cars. It was cars driven in convoy on a very carefully planned route to give it very real world conditions. So roundabout stops, highway, you name it, the tires went through it. And they were driven in convoy and the tires were rotated between the vehicles, the drivers were rotated between vehicles. So it was as fair as it could be. And the tread depth, it wasn't measured with a tread depth. It, there's a big machine that measures it with a laser to give you a complete overview of the tires wear performance. So the figures I'm going to give you are probably the most applicable to the real world possible. Some of the other tests that do do wear, they do it on a machine and the figures look slightly different from this, but I'm confident in these figures because I'm confident in Decra. Now, you won't be surprised to know the Michelin was the best. This is in Michelin's DNA, longevity. Uh, the Goodyear and Continental were about 15% behind. So not that far behind, but 15% is still quite a lead. And then the Hankook was 24% behind, and then the Bridgestone and Yokohama were 33% behind. So that's quite a big difference in wear performance. The benefit of doing wear is the fact I can now factor in the purchase price of these tires. We can work out uh, the value score, which is based on a figure, which is euro per 1,000 kilometers driven. Um, in this case, obviously pricing will vary depending on the region you're at. So maybe if you wanna do the maths based on the wear data and your local prices, and put it in the comments. I'd be really interested to see that. But in this test, the price I paid, the Hankook was actually the best value at three euros 16 per thousand kilometers. The Continental was a little bit behind at three euros 30. The Michelin and Goodyear were pretty much tied at three euros 50 per thousand kilometers. And then we have the fast wearing expensive tires like the Bridgestone. Uh, this worked out at 453 euros per thousand kilometers. So that's quite a difference between three euros 16 and 453 for every thousand kilometers you drive on these tires. Abrasion is one of the final figures we get from the wear test. Now the abrasion figure isn't something that directly applies to your wallet. It's not something that costs you more money. It's not something that is relevant to a tire's grip performance, but it's a more important figure. It's becoming more and more important because it relates to the rubber particulate that the tires give off as you're traveling. So how much rubber the tires are putting into the environment. Now, this figure was led by Michelin. The figure is given in, I need to check this. It is milligrams of tread lost per kilometer normalized to a one ton vehicle. So there is a bit of mathematics involved in this, um, but Michelin was the best tire for the environment. Hankook produced 30% uh, or 32% more rubber particulate matter into the environment. This is something everyone, especially us tire testers, we're all pushing the tire industry to do better in the future. And it's something Michelin is shouting about a lot. And I wonder why they're shouting about it because they are the best in it. So if you're very focused on the environment, the Michelin's are tired, but the rest of the data is on screen. Finally, rim protection. If you want rim protection, you have to be buying the Goodyear or Bridgestone. Um, there is a hint of rim protection on the Michelin and Continental, but personally, I don't think it's gonna do that much. Uh, and the other two tires don't have any, sadly. So if you wanna protect your alloys, which I know a lot of people focus on, um, a good year of just going from that. So as for the final results, um, I'm almost out of time. I've pretty much just got to pack up and disappear. So I am rushing through this a little bit and the score weighting I've applied for the final results, um, I'm not entirely convinced I'm fixed on it yet. So go check out the Tire Reviews website for my final score weighting because that will be updated when this video is released and put your own score weighting into the website uh, and let me know what your results are. Uh, but for now, this is the order I'm, I'm giving you the results in. Um, the Yokohama is a great sports tire. As I've already said, it's an old school tire. It gives up rolling resistance, it gives up comfort, and it gives us handling, and it gives us some ability on track to actually hammer through. This is one of the few tires I'd actually recommend taking on track of these six. Um, I really, really appreciate Yokohama for making a tire like this. It's not a tire I can recommend to everyone for road use, but it's one of those tires I'm saying I wouldn't recommend. And then if I had a Golf GTI and I was picking from these six tires, I might sneak that tire on myself just because I love the handling. But that's something that I enjoy as a driver. It's not something I'm sure the entire world will enjoy. The Bridgestone is a very similar product, but it is much better in the wet, especially wet braking, the Bridgestone has a significant advantage. Um, without wear, including in this test, you've seen this tire win test or come in the top two. I've recommended it, highly recommended it. And that's in tests that don't score wear. Now we've seen, now I've actually got some wear figures I can rely on and I'm confident in. Um, this tire does need more longevity. It wears out a little bit too quickly. 
Um, we've seen on track, I keep saying this, but just don't use it on track. There are user reviews on the tire reviews website that have had exactly the same experience. Um, so it is a very, very good tire. It's a fun tire. It's got good grip. It's got very good wet grip on the road. When warm, it does give up a little bit when cooler, um, but the Achilles heel of this tire is the longevity, the wear. Um, the Hankook is a quality tire. It's great value, even though it is a high wearing tire because the purchase price is cheaper. Um, it is a very good value tire but just don't fit it expecting a sports tire. I know it's in this kind of sports segment, but it's definitely the most touring of the six tires. So if you fit this to something like a GTI and you really enjoy driving, you're probably gonna be a little bit disappointed, but if you've just got a normal Golf and you want just a, a well-priced, good value tire that's excellent in the wet, um, the Hankook's a great option, I can recommend that. The Goodyear is a tire, the Asymmetric 6 is a tire that does everything well. The Asymmetric 5, I've called before one of the best rounded tires of the segment and the asymmetric six just seems to continue that on. Um, it's great in the dry, it's great in the wet. Um, it did drop off a little bit when cooler, but I, I didn't notice that. Um, and subjectively, I think it's, it just blends everything from this group into one package better than any of other tires. So while it's not winning on points, um, this is the tire I might end up recommending the most. I realize this is confusing because you've got my personal opinion the test results, and then what I'm gonna be recommending to most people, it's definitely gonna be one of these tires, but I think for the people who like driving but perhaps don't hammer around on track constantly, um, the Goodyear is a really good choice. The Michelin is another tire that just does everything well. It's not quite as sporty as the Goodyear, um, but it really does do a lot of things well. It is also the tire that is the best for the environment. So if the environmental impact of your life is something that's a concern to you, the Michelin is probably the tire to pick. Um, it does also have that extra sexy sidewall, which I believe um, studies have looked into, and it gives your car about an extra 10 horsepower having that soft touch velvet sidewall. So uh, if you want a little bit more free power, the Michelin's your choice. Now, it is a very, very good all-round tire, and um, one I can highly recommend. Um, and finally, whatever I do with the score weighting, because I have had to play around with the score weighting, there's always one tire that's a little bit ahead of the rest, and that is the Continental Premium Contact 7 mostly because of the wet performance of the tire. We know wet performance is very important for the road. So it is an outstanding tire and wet braking. I'm a little bit sad because the premium contact seven obviously replaces the premium contact six. And I feel like I've lost a slightly troubled best friend in the premium contact six because that was the tire I chose for my personal car. And it wasn't always the best tire in the wet, but it was always one of the best handling tires. And this tire has definitely lost the edge in 18 inch. I've tested it in 16 inch, and it was still one of the best in 16 inch, but in 18 inch, um, it has softened up a little bit compared to the rivals. So I think like the Yokohama might have taken over that troubled best friend role for me, but for people on the road, for my dad, for wet braking, this tire is incredibly well. Um, it's exceptionally capable, but the Continental Michelin and Goodyear are all incredible tires. If I could call them all winners, I would. Um, I, I would have no hesitation recommending any of those. The Hankook turns out to be very good value and very good in the wet. The Bridgestone is a fun tire if, if you don't mind spending a bit of money. And the Yokohama has that trackability. So it's six very similar tires, but also six very different tires, which I find fascinating and exciting about tire testing. As I've already said, go put your own score weighting in the website tirereviews.com linked in the description. Um, let me know what your result is. Let me know which tire you're probably gonna fit next. Um, apologies again for the kind of rush nature of this and a bit too much of my face and not enough B-roll. It's just been a very difficult test week, but I'm glad we've got all the important data out. And I think it's been a really fascinating conclusion. Um, and as always, safe motoring.